Jenny Mano and welcome to my channel. This week we're going to work quick, quick studies. Last few weeks we've had a lot of intense work with the line work and the focus and the zentangling and the neuropathic art. So join me today. Let's get started. Hi friends. Welcome to this week's How To Tuesday. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I um, am so excited about this week's lesson. Um, I've been noodling it around in my brain. I'm always noodling. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I'm always noodling, especially because I'm always trying to come up with something new and exciting and different for you guys uh, each week. So um, thank you for showing up and welcome if you are new to my channel. Um, if you like what you're seeing and you're enjoying How To Tuesdays, please like and subscribe and click the bell. Also, if you are a person who prefers a real-time ad-free, fully instructed lesson, I have those over on my Patreon channel. Um, the link will for that will be in the description box and I'd be honored if you would go check it out. Okay, what we're gonna do here is, um, I have decided to create a bunch of different portraits super fast. This is gonna be a lesson, a study, and working quickly with your subject, which is gonna be portraits, and with your tools, your mediums that you're gonna use, okay? So first we're gonna prep, and what I've done is I've grabbed, I haven't prepped this one because I wanted to show you guys, but I've grabbed a bunch of different substrates all different kinds, all different stuff. This one I didn't even know. I've had this ledger, gosh, for, I don't even know, 10 years maybe? Pretend, I don't know, a long time. And I pulled this page out, I had no idea what the ink was. I love that when I hit it with the clear gesso, it activated and did that. <laughs> Happy accident. And then just this, I, everything here I've added um, clear gesso to. You can kind of hear it, it's a little scratchy. Just because I wanted to play with my um, Faber-Castell pit pens. Uh, I've done a tutorial a month or two months ago, maybe, maybe a month and a half ago, where I put down um, some clear gesso and then work with these pit pens, uh, the artist pit pens, and they're smearable. You have to work quick. You have to work quick, but they're smearable. So um, yeah, so I thought I'd try. Now that was on, I wanna say that was on watercolor paper. I don't have watercolor paper here. This is all different kinds of stuff, but I did, prep the page with clear gesso first before I use these when I did that. I'm pretty sure it was watercolor paper. And then I also have, I grabbed a bunch of different colors of my chalk pastels, because I love chalk pastels. Look at how pretty these are. Ugh, the colors, I have so many more. Um, these are the little Ikea things that slide into the little holders on the peg rack that they sell. So I have those. And then I grabbed my Cibolo All because I'm gonna do the initial portrait sketch with these. And these are, if you're not familiar with Stabilo Alls, um, they're highly um, water soluble or highly active, they, they are heavily water soluble and they're very, very pigmented. So a little goes a long way. I personally kind of like the darkness of these, so I'll go a little heavy in some spots, but the, this is going to be a combination. I have never done this before in this format, so I'm very excited and I'm, I'm doing it with you guys kind of live, if you will. But um definitely doing it with you so that we can uh, discover together. And then of course, I always have these. These are kind of like, I've seen them like, well, why did I pull those? Like, why do I have them sitting there? I have them in my cute little cauldron cup. And I, I pull them because these are like my security blanket. It's, it's interesting, it dawned on me. These are like my security blanket when I'm working. Um, yeah, like I have my black pens, all different sizes, Sharpies to Faber-Castell pit pens, all different sizes. I have my whites. Uni Pasca, some black Uni Pasca. I have my graphite and an eraser. These are just kind of my security. So I'm just going to keep them there. I'm just going to keep them there and let them be. If they don't partake in this lesson, then they don't partake in this lesson. But that's what I have. And so I'm going to do a quick little um, demonstration here. I'm just going to, just a few drops. I don't want to saturate because these are, you know, they're not really intended to be wet water, work on, you know, wet on. Um, to have any wetness or any type of liquid or anything, a wet medium. So I just did a few drops. You can see I'm not being super controlled. I'm just slapping it on. I'm pretty much making it to where it's like almost a dry brush because I've put just enough on to um, spread it out. And then I'm just going to dry it real quick. And then those, my surfaces are prepped, ideally. I should be able, these may work differently. We'll see, we'll see because of the substrate that they're working on. They may work differently. And as always, I do both sides to help prevent that uh, buckle, the really bad buckle, if you will. There should be no more water. I might have water when I activate, my, if, I act, if I choose to activate these guys. 
nice to below, but the markers might do that. And I'm okay with it. I do suggest that you keep, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I do suggest that you keep a paper towel because if you if your pens hit the stabilol, which they will, um, you want to clear off the clean off the tip. You don't want the stabilol to sit on the tip. Now, again, quick studies, quick sketches. Um, let me straighten up, clear some space here, and then I will get started. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Mm -hmm.